Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about getting your boat ready to launch for the first time for the season. But first I'd like to do a little shout out here to Danger Marine. Don't know if you can see this or not. Stu makes a lot of videos uh, about boats and boating and boat maintenance and boat repairs. Uh, he lives in Australia, so he's in the upside down part of the world. And uh, he was one of the first YouTubers that I found when I was getting into boating. And uh, his videos were really, really helpful. He's extremely knowledgeable about outboards, boat etiquette, all those kinds of things. And his videos are great. He just did a, recently did a series of a steel trawler that he redid. And he's actually injured right now, uh, very seriously. He hurt his arms pretty badly in a uh, boat-related injury. And um, he's recovering from that, but uh, I'd like to shout out to him. If you get a chance to check out his channel, I've got it linked here. So please take a look at, uh, at Danger Marine. For those of us who aren't fortunate enough to live in a place like Florida, or where you can keep your boat in the water all year round, we have to winterize our boats and then get them ready in the spring for boating season again. And for some of us who are new to boating, or uh, have only been doing this for a few years, sometimes it's kind of hard to remember all the things that you're supposed to do. And there's a million horror stories out there about people launching their boats and having things go terribly wrong. Not to mention the amount of times you can lose your temper and lose your cool in front of your family and your friends because you get all the way down to the boat ramp and you forgot your drain plug. So uh, one of the things I did is I actually made myself a little checklist here um, for getting my boat launched. And today I actually launched my boat uh, for the season and everything went very smoothly. I had a friend come by while I was unloading it from the trailer uh, just to see, you know, just kind of get another set of eyes on things or another set of hands if I needed it. And I didn't even need him, but it was great. He came down and he helped out and, um, but it all went without incident. And the reason it went without an incident, <laughs> the reason it went without any incidents is because I triple checked everything and I was extra prepared. So let me kind of go through some of the things that you want to make sure that you're doing before you're launching your boat for the first time for the season, or if you're new to this and before you're launching a boat for the first time. So one of the first things I did was I actually called, uh, make sure my insurance was up to date on my boat. So uh, my insurance policy was good. And then also my boat towing insurance. I'm running a motor from 1985 and my boat is from 1976. So the chances of something breaking down are definitely greater, but I also wanted to make sure that I have coverage for those kinds of things. So I have Towboat US insurance on my boat and I called them up just to verify that I had the coverage that I wanted, that I had the app on my phone and all those kinds of things. Also wanted to make sure that my registration was up to date. Now this year they're letting a little bit of waivers go because of what's going on in the world, but I still was able to get my stickers, get them on my boat and be all compliant. So. First things are all things that you can do from the comfort of your home long before you go to bring your boat out, which is your registration, your insurance, and your towing. The next thing I did was a general hull inspection. And this is just sort of a quick look over just to make sure that nothing damaged the hull of your boat over the winter. You know, when you were mowing the lawn, did a rock flick up on it? Is there a crack? Is there a chip, a chunk out of the fiberglass that's missing? Is there something wrong with the transom? So just sort of kind of taking a good look at the hull, doing a once over, making sure everything's okay. And then of course, you get into the nuts and bolts of things. So one of the first things I check are my batteries. Now I uh, have put out another video about how I run my batteries on a slow trickle charge all winter long and leave them in the boat. That worked perfectly. And I'm able to uh, switch on my power switch here and it shows me the voltage of my batteries both batteries, battery one and battery two, and their voltage is perfectly where it should be. Um, but you want to check that, whether with a voltmeter or by whenever you go to do a, uh, an engine test, 
or some other means, you want to make sure that your batteries are good, that everything's connected, all the connections are nice, and that your, their, your batteries are charged. The next thing is your fuel and your fuel systems. The newer fuels don't seem to hold up very well, so um, they recommend putting a fuel stabilizer in them if you leave fuel in tanks over the winter. And I double up the amount of fuel stabilizer that I should put in there just to be safe. Um, and I leave fuel in my tanks all winter long. Um, but checking to make sure your fuel is still good. Does it have stabilizer in there? Are your fuel lines okay? And, uh, you know, is it the right kind of fuel? Are your fuel tanks leaking? Um, making sure all that stuff is okay. And then as well as oil. If you have a four-stroke motor, obviously checking the oil like you would with a car. But I have a two-stroke with an oil injection system. So making sure that my oil injector tank is full, making sure that bulb is pumped up, those fuel, those oil fuel lines, oil lines are, are intact and not leaking and everything's connected right. Um, last year I replaced my main fuel line with the uh, pressure bulb on there. So I know I have a brand new fuel line and I have a spare fuel line just in case, which is the older one, but it was fine. The next things you want to check are things like your steering and controls, your shifter, your uh, tilt and trim. You know, that's basically, you know, making sure, you know, does your wheel turn correctly? Is everything lubricated correctly with your steering controls? Does your shifter work right? My shifter had some serious problems last year. And uh, actually, whenever I took my boat out for a trial run this year, it doesn't seem like it's much better. It works, but it's not working correctly yet doing the tilt and trim check on your motor, making sure it's tilting and trimming correctly. Then other things like an engine visual inspection, pop the cover off, take a look. Did any rodents or critters get inside of your engine cover over the winter? Are your spark plugs connected? Is everything good there? If you did all the correct winterizing with your engine, then it should be good to go come the spring. But still you should pull the cover off, take a look. See if any hoses have come off. See if any fuel's leaking anywhere or say any other things going wrong. Then you want to test run your engine. Obviously you want to put the muffs on there if it's an outboard so that you're running water through there. You want to make sure water is coming out the appropriate holes that it's supposed to be coming out when the motor's running. Uh, smaller ones, you can run them in a barrel or in a bucket filled with water. You never want to run your motor dry, have an outboard motor, um, but starting it up testing it out. When I uh, test started mine, I was going to make a video on it, but the thing kicked right over right away and ran absolutely perfectly and idled right down and just sat there idling and water was coming through the cooling system. Everything was just right. Um, and all I had done last year was I had fogged the motor and uh, sprayed some things on there and covered it all up. Before you go out, make sure your engine works. Make sure your batteries are good because you don't want to get down to the marina, be launching your boat and now you can't get it started. So make sure those things are working. Then checking other things like your gauges. I know my volt gauge works. My tachometer does not work, but I don't need a tachometer. I, uh, I listen and I don't run my boat that hard. Um, as far as other gauges, I have a compass, I have a, uh, a depth speed thing, and I have my VHF radio. Um, but I also checked all my other switches and everything like that to make sure everything was working properly or the things that were broken <laughs> were things that I didn't necessarily need. One of the next things you want to check is your lights. I don't run at the night very often, but I did check my, my, uh, my, my lighting, make sure all my lights were working correctly. Then, very important stuff, because if the Coast Guard pulls you over, this is what they're very concerned about, is your safety gear. Do you have all of your life vests? Are they in good shape? Are they mildewy? Are they easily accessible? Do you have a horn, sound devices? Uh, VHF radio, um, emergency flares, any of the other kinds of things that you're required to have. So making sure you have all your safety gear, rechecking what the checklist is for your area for the safety gear. Make sure you have everything that you need safety-wise on your boat because you can put it in there and if everything goes great, you just have it in the boat where it's supposed to be. If anybody needs to check, they can see it. And if you ever need it, it's there. The next thing is the very important things the drain plug and the bilge pump. So I actually have a spare drain plug too, but I checked both my drain plugs, made sure the hole was clean, and I put my drain plug in from where the bilge is. So I put it in from the inside of the boat. Somebody told me that that's safer to do so it never falls out into the river or into the bay. It's, if it 
comes loose, it's right there in your bilge and you can stick it back in again. I have a, my drain plug in there and I have a spare drain plug just in case. Um, my bilge pump. My bilge pump was all connected. Last year I had to replace the float and I did that near the end of the season. But what was interesting is when I replaced the float, I just basically cut the wires, twisted them together, put some electrical tape around it because it was September at the time and I knew I wasn't gonna be boating much longer. And I didn't think anything more about it. So when I went to check my bilge pump, I reached down in there and there was some leaves and debris and I took that out of the bilge and I lifted up on the float to activate the bilge pump and nothing came on. And I played with it a couple times and nothing happened. My bilge pump also has a manual switch here on my dash. And so I hit the uh, bilge pump on switch and it, uh, with power on, um, and I could hear the bilge pump running. So I knew the float switch wasn't working. So I checked my wire connections, just reaching around with the wires and touching and pinching in those areas. And I was able to get it to work. So I knew I had a bad connection there. So that was something that I had failed to do correctly last year. And I would not have had my bilge pump working after a rain or if I'm out and my, my bilge was filling up until I actually manually switched it on if I hadn't checked that. So I took it all apart, all the wiring, and uh, cleaned it all up, soldered everything back together and put it together correctly. So I'm not gonna have that problem again. Um, but I did check that before I went out and not that, you know, that would have been a, uh, a horrible catastrophe, but I could have come out to my boat in the marina after a big rain and my boat would have been filled with water or sunk. And it would have been just because of the fact that I never bothered fixing the wires on my bilge pump. So that's why you check that stuff. And then lastly, checking your fittings and brackets for all the different kinds of things, you know, for your bimini top, your windshield, uh, any other things, railings, grips, uh, engine mounts, all that sort of stuff. Just kind of checking all that stuff, making sure it's held together, it's correct, it's working. Um, you know, anything that's, you know, any cleats that are missing or broken or damaged or whatever, addressing those kinds of things. By doing that, before you take your boat out of your yard, you save yourself a whole lot of headaches. If you'd like a copy of my checklist, I'll put it in the description below. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this somewhat informative and useful. If you did like this and you want to be alerted whenever I have my next videos coming out, please be sure to hit the subscribe link and ring that bell so you get notifications. And if you have any comments or anything to add, please be sure to do that below. I love when people comment on my videos. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day.